Welcome back to Speed Demon Painting, where today we're taking a deep dive into the Imperium Order of Battle, or Orbat for short. The first thing we're looking at are the Imperium weapon qualities and their special rules which make them unique to all other factions. What is noticeable about their weapons is the Voltaic rule. Um, instead of just doing a single Disorder token, they will do two whenever they uh, cause critical damage. and. Uh, if you have to roll for a critical damage and your opponent's ship has an online generator, the effect is uh, always generator shut down, which can be very handy in some cases, but it can be a downside in some. I mean, sometimes you're just looking at that last bit of hull damage to take a ship down, praying that you get that Sturgenium flare or, uh, or something like a magazine explosion, but it's just not an option because it's always the generator shut down. The other things that they uh, have as special rules are Blitz and Bombers. These are special SRS tokens uh, that uh, hit for 5 dice of damage rather than the usual 3. Uh, and they come with uh, aerial, bomb and voltaic weapons, uh, weapon qualities I should say. Um, they are also disciplined, meaning the second level of disorder is something they can just ignore. Uh, that is the one where you cannot uh, support with other ships within the same unit, just for clarity. They also have a rule called Inductorium. When they're shooting with those Voltaic or Arc weapons, Electro weapons in other words, you sort of have to roll all of the dice, including the ones generated by critical hits and everything. And at the end of the entire uh, dice resolution, you count the number of critical hits, and if that equals or exceeds the number, um, no it has to exceed, sorry, uh, if it exceeds the number of models in the unit you're shooting at, you gain an extra dice equal to the number of models in the target unit. So for instance, if you're shooting at a unit of four uh, or, or three ships rather, you would have to score four or more crits in order to gain three extra dice to your attack. The, the, yeah, the Prussian Empire needs this. They're as we'll discuss later on, their weapons generally have fewer dice than other factions. What are they good at, really good at, is the lightning assault. Yeah. They get an extra assault action dice um, in the pool for each weapon listed with the arc or voltaic quality. Um, that is an assault dice added to the pool and some of these ships really have a ton of voltaic weapons so their uh, assault actions can get really really nasty compared to other factions also if they have a storm generator they actually get two of them so they've got sort of a, an automatic mini built-in um, assault generator a, a fury generator if you will and the last thing is super supercharged munitions. This is a, the latest addition to these Orbats. Your flagships shoot harder than uh, traditional cruisers because they can take up to three heavy volt gun batteries or heavy rocket batteries and have them shoot at lead value instead of having to do one lead weapon and two in, uh, in support. So they throw extra dice compared to the other ones. And something that is different for these uh, Imperium players is it also works on Gustav bombard weapons that just get a flat out three extra attack dice uh, in their pools when they're shooting at a Gustav bringing it from a humble 11 to a rather nasty 14 uh, in this case. The next big thing for the Germans are the different battle fleets that they can take. Uh, they have two generic rules in there called the Lightning Raid. This is where you can send out a single squadron of a Blitzen Bomber at the start of the battle that can enter play as if it were from a long range sortie. I have not really had a lot of luck with this one. Uh, long range sortie means your opponent gets to double his ADV and that means that even though Blitzen Bombers get 5 dice, if your opponent gets to double his ADV you'll be fairly lucky if this does anything noticeable. Also those Blitz and Bombers don't have uh, the piercing rule, so that uh, instant critical hit that you can get with SRS tokens is not really a thing here, so it's not something I would play around. Command reroll is a command reroll as you would expect. The Imperium fleet is basically only known for the command reroll and the lightning raid, uh, and you can take whatever you want in it, there's nothing special about this one. 
The Elector battle fleet was changed slightly um, for the better. You have to include an Elector class battleship, more on which later, and a uh, Blücher unit, a full sized one if you want to have the advantage of having your flagship swap its uh, normal torpedoes to heavy torpedoes. It's a solid upgrade, mind you, and this Elector battle fleet is very much worth it in my opinion. The Tempelhof battle fleet as well is one that has a very small requirement to actually get the bonus to it. So if you take a Tempelhof unit and you have to accompany it with a single Conrad with escort duty, you will not have any reduction in SRS capacity when reduced or crippled. That is a solid option and it doesn't really take all that much uh, to get there, so strong battle fleet in my opinion. The Ice Maiden battle fleet if is, is the one you have to take if you want to include the big Ice Maiden ship and you can include a Konig class in it as well. The combination of an Ice Maiden and a Konig class is quite strong though, so it's something that you probably want to do and you're free to select any Prussian or Teutonic units, more on which later, so that is also very flexible. Um, you get two commandery rolls, so that's also great. And if you have the König class included, all units in the battle fleet may re-roll re a single action dice in their activation. That can also be quite clutch to actually get that cheeky little blank off as well, so it is a very strong bonus too. Especially since it applies to all units in the battle fleet, and if you're taking an Ice Maiden, you're and the König in one fleet, you're very unlikely to have the points to spare to take any other battle fleet, so it better damn well be a good fleet bonus. The line breaker was nerfed quite a bit, to the point where I'm going like, <laughs> is this one even worth taking anymore? I think it'll be mostly useful for when the uh, Scandinavian fleet parts comes out, but right now I would use the Elector class battle fleet every single time if I could. That is to say, if you're going to be using any of the, the Prussian ships, just go for the Elector one. I think this one is not worth it anymore. I'm not going to go in uh, too much about the mercenary battle fleets, just know that the options are there. Uh, they're not all fleshed out yet. And the two new ones that uh, that are available are the, uh, the Teutonic battle fleet, where you have to take a Teutonic flagship. Um, there's only two of them. That is one of the special Ice Maiden units and the König, so that's essentially one of these. Um, and you can use Prussian, Scandinavian or Bavarian units in there, up to two additional units. Now, Bavarian is something new, I haven't encountered it yet, so that's just for the future, I suppose. Also, that unit gains the Teutonic trait, so that's great, you can have quite a bit of flexibility to add in there. Also, you can include three units with the Teutonic traits, and when you're looking at them, uh, there's a few of them that can swap from Prussian to Teutonic. Um, so, yeah, it's still flexible enough in my eyes. You cannot include more than one Vitruvian Colossus, however. If you want to spam Colossus, uh, then yeah, you're stuck with the Hochmeister battle fleet. Not that that is a bad thing per se, because if you take three Hochmeisters, um, you can uh, yeah, you can slam them into a single battle fleet, giving you an extra command reroll. That's always good. And uh, yeah, they get elite crew, which is very handy because those Hochmeisters are very likely to be found in an assault somewhere. So that is uh, that is a strong bonus. The bonus for the Teutonic battle fleet, if you want to put your Hochmeisters into one of those, though, is also quite strong. They get the uh, the option to repair a bit of damage if they are uh, battle ready uh, in a similar vein to what the, the Enlightened can do. Next up are all of the equipment and the weapons that the Imperium can field and they make a special mention of the flak fielding on the top here. Uh, they very much fill the role now of a purely designated uh, aerial or skimming unit. Uh, attack unit. They were way too good before. It's a nerf, there's no uh, two ways around it, but it's it was a well-deserved one 
the flag feeling was way too good in its previous iteration. Uh, and now it's still very, very good, but only if you're shooting at aerial units and skimming units. It's okay though when shooting at non-flying units, however. The Freya array is something you will often find as an upgrade to other things. Uh, the part about the unit coherency is trivial, if you ask me. Two air defense extra can be useful, but it very much depends on your opponent. And sadly, if you want to take a Freya array, it often means you have to swap out a Flak Feeling for it. And yeah, that's not a, a very appealing option to me, at least. Um, however, if you're a new player, Magnets. Always just go for the Magnets, it's the best option by far. As far as generators go, they have been changed in these recent Orbats, so I'm not going to go over all of them, but I'm going to mention the special one that the Imperium has, and that is the Storm Generator, found on, for instance, the Kaiser class and the Elector class battleships. If they have a Storm Generator, they get an extra type of attack that they have to use during the shooting phase, so that's a good thing. You do get to move first before using your generator. You don't have to do it at the very start during special operations. But it only has a range of 15 inch. The attack is for 13 action dice, which is good with full take. So if it does hit, it shuts the enemy generator down and it causes an extra point of disorder. And you can't combine it with any other weapon. So it's just that attack. However, once it shoots with that attack, it becomes obscured and this is the true bonus if you ask me. Becoming obscured is a big thing because they changed the shroud generator in general. Shroud generators just reduce your heavy hits to single hits from now on and so the bonus to get obscured from a generator is no longer there so the storm generator as far as being more valuable definitely has gone up. Now in terms of weapons um, there's one big one that you have to take into account here. The Germans have uh, volt gun batteries, heavy volt gun batteries, and when you look at those stats compared to traditional gun batteries, you will notice that they have very, very poor support values. And they even have slightly lower, at least in some range brackets like the optimum one, uh, lead values compared to the other ones. Inductorium compensates this to some extent, but yeah, you are sh uh, throwing fewer dice out there with your standard weapons. Which isn't necessarily bad, it means that the other weapons are, you know, more appealing in different ways. They've got a very good bombard, like I said, the Gustav Heavy Bombard is a weapon that really pulls its weight during uh, during combat, so that's good. They have the standard rocket batteries, the standard broadsides that you would expect. The claw arc projector is something that you find in many a force as well, so there's nothing new about this. However, what they do have are torpedoes, they're called Speerschleugers, if I pronounce that correctly. Uh, my German is quite poor which are voltaic. They assist with uh, the close combat and they have that whole generator shutdown thing. And it means inductorium also works for the torpedo attacks, which is something to keep in mind because I keep forgetting that uh, for some reason. Um, but yeah, they have got slightly better than average uh, torpedoes because of that inductorium rule. Next up are the Imperium flagships, and we start off with the Elector battleship. Uh, the Elector battleship has the Gustav heavy bombard pointed forwards, and then have two heavy volt guns aimed to the rear, with one of them only having the option to shoot in the aft as well. This is the one that you do not want. If you can, you can alter the cost by 10 points and swap a single heavy volt gun battery with a generator. Always, always do this if you're running one of these ships. Um, the chances of you firing backwards in any meaningful way with this one are uh, very slim. And uh, yeah, just take that generator, trust me. You can also get some phosphor shells. I think that's a bit of a heavy points cost for it. At 20 points, um, uh, not that convinced about it. 
the ship also comes with super supercharged munitions. That is the one that makes your uh, Volt gun batteries shoot harder than they do, and the one that makes your Gustav bombard shoot uh, harder than it normally does with 14 dice, uh, which is very, very useful. However, you're not really making a lot of use from the heavy Volt gun battery because you would probably want to use it on the Gustav heavy bombard and you can only use it once per activation. So choose wisely, choose the bombard if you have to. This ship, however, and this is the most interesting part if you ask me, can be upgraded by, to be a Kaiser Elector Heavy Battleship. If you do, it costs 40 points. That's a bit of an investment, but what do you get for that? Well, first of all, the Bombard is changed with the heavy Volt Gun battery, not just one, but two of them, which makes supercharged munici munitions more of a thing. And when we were talking about the Elector fleet, we also noticed that the Speerschluder, that is normally included in one, can be bumped up to a heavy Speerschluder. This is combined with the Spotter Rule. That Spotter Rule isn't just there for the, bo uh, the Gustav Bombard, but also for the heavy Speerschluder. And I personally love that uh, dif uh, difference between the two of them. They also gain, and this is the big one, Ablative Armor. That means that if somebody is shooting at you with gunnery weapons that are supporting each other, each support weapon will have one fewer dice than you would normally uh, get. That's not just the case for gunnery weapons, that's also the case for fusillade weapons. Uh, so if squadrons are shooting at you with broadsides, they will have fewer dice as well. The first one is more common though. This alone makes the Kaiser Elector Heavy Battleship an absolute monster. Especially when you combine this one with the shield generator. If you're just running a normal Elector battleship, I would opt for the shroud, opt for the shroud generator. It's just more all round. However, if you're running a Kaiser instead, with ablative armor and stacking it with a shield generator, you can get some very big reductions, making your ship all but invulnerable to smaller weapons, if you will, because of those two stacking so nicely. Um, so yeah, I personally always take the Kaiser Elector if I have the points to spare for it. I'm going to be brief about these named ones. The SMS Brandenburg. Don't take it. It has a Gustav Bombard aimed to the back and one to the front. There's nothing more awkward than that. You'll almost never get in a fire position where you can use both of them. This is just not a good option. Uh, the uh, Tirpitz is also one that I would never take. Why? Because you're pretty much stuck uh, without any options to do things like changing out for um, for, for Volt Guns, for Atomic ones, you can do that, but you're not getting the point reduction for it. And I fail to see, also with getting Ablative Armor, what the true value of this one is when you compare it to, you know, just getting a regular old Kaiser. Um, I'm not really seeing it, I'm not that enthusiastic about this one whatsoever. It's just, it's 10 points more than the other one, while bringing very little to it. The Heidelberg Logistics Battlecruiser, um, however, can be a solid one. Uh, it also still has the supercharged munitions, and it comes with a very handy little rule of the mine layer and the mine sweeper as well. And it got buffed with logistical support, well, it had that before as well. Um, and yeah, I think that is a very solid option. Should you want to actually take the Gustav Heavy Bombard, you can take so, or you can do so by taking the Holzendorf loadout. And the phosphor shells are just included in it. Doesn't cost any options, uh, any points to upgrade this one. So if you want to have a good bombard ship for 230 points, I absolutely love this Holzendorf loadout. I haven't tried it yet, but it just looks very solid on paper so far. And then we have the Ice Maiden ships. The Ice Maidens, 
if you have big battles coming up, why wouldn't you want to use one of these? Uh, Sturmbringer, triple one of those. It was changed, it now has a Sturmklaue. Um, in, that used to be Volt Guns, they changed it out. And the reason why it's so exciting is because they now come with advanced Sturm Coils. And that means that they get the sustained quality while at closing range. I think it's a bit weird that it is only at closing range though. You would hope that they were more effective uh, also up close, but hey ho. It doesn't really matter that much if you get someone up close and those Stormbringers can fire from uh, close by. Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna ruin someone's day. However, if they get sustained, those Stormcloud can really do a lot of work. So they are way better than Vault Guns and the thing has gotten cheaper. So I can only be happy the Ice Maiden has gotten you know, even better than it was before. Um, there's also a few changes to Lumbering. They cleared out so that you can now just be um, in or outside of your deployment zone. As long as your butt is touching your, uh, your board edge, you're good. Um, Another thing is, this unit doesn't suffer from disorder from collision. That's a big one, because that mass here got changed to 6. This thing drifts 6 inches forwards. Uh, you definitely want to be able to, to sort of put it back in that uh, uh, in, in reverse because of that uh, lumbering. It's going to happen quite a few times. But even if you hit something, it doesn't really matter. This other big thing is, um, if they're already at Chaos and Disarray, you're not going to get extra damage from receiving extra chaos and disarray. You're still in trouble for supporting your own weapons, but at least you're not taking damage like there is no tomorrow anymore, so that's good. And yeah, they got buffed with all of the new SRS rules, so also these Ice Maidens are great. The Ice Cult Schönheit is a variant that I mostly marked being Teutonic, that's a good thing. You can swip, uh, sort of fit it into that Teutonic fleet if you so desire. And it comes with uh, heavy Gustav bombards um, with supercharged munitions as well, so you can actually boost some of them. Um, actually, I have to check as well. Sorry for the fast scrolling, but if I'm not mistaken, the supercharged munitions effectively work for all uh, of the, the bombard attacks. Any Gustav bombard on this unit gains plus three attack dice pools with, uh, when using this weapon. This is great for the Ice Cult Schönheit because it is, is not bound to that just one per activation. You're getting three supercharged um, versions of, uh, of that one, so that's great. I'm skipping the Ragnarok for now because I don't want to talk about the Scandinavian units just yet and swapping over to the Tempelhof fleet carrier. It got moderately cheaper and if you're taking the special version, the Blitzen Bomber carrier, it got boosted by giving it an extra token because yeah, the Blitzen Bombers, as we've discussed earlier, they're not that impressive, sadly. But Tempelhof Blitzen heavy carrier there's nothing wrong with that. Five of those is going to put in work. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the flagships. Next up, we get to the meat and potatoes of your uh, fleet. The first one up is the Arminius frigate. Now it is the smallest ship available to uh, to this fleet. It's the mass one ship. Uh, comes with a volt gun battery and a light broadside, which is not impressive at all. However, it comes with focused gunnery. And this is an interesting rule because um, that means that if you're shooting all of your uh, gunnery attacks against the same initial target, you get plus two to all your gunnery action dice pools. This is a weird one because, um, well, if you all always shoot at the same initial target and it should die, you can always reallocate your hits to something else in the same unit within five inches. So you just want to sort of pull your attacks such that you still get enough dice out of it and then you can just reallocate them should your first target die. What do I mean by that? If this one shoots at other frigates, what I would do is combine two weapons to shoot at one initial target and do that three times in your unit. 
if you take a unit of six of them. Then your first attack would generate eight dice, the next one would generate eight, and the next one would generate eight. Eight dice can sometimes be enough to remove another frigate in one go. So that makes it somewhat usable, these, uh, these ships. However, if I can avoid taking Arminius frigates, and in fact mass one ships altogether, I always do. For one simple reason, and it's something I hope War Cradle fixes in the future. You're shooting yourself in the foot if you take mass one ships with victory and valor cards. Right now, if you draw, if your opponent draws a kill something with mass one, and you don't have any mass ones, he's left with a dead victory card in his hand. And that is actually much more of a downside than just using our minion frigates and filling up those last few points with your Blitz and Bomber raid that we discussed at the start. It's a it's an absolute shame that this is the case, but yeah, it's what I have found out so far. Arminius frigates can now be taken as two, or impacts of two, but if you just want to be handing out um, squadron killer bonuses to your opponent, like they are Skittles, then do so. I would never do so because of that. So, it's not that this ship is necessarily bad, I think there's just a few issues with mass one ships in this game. The Augustus Bombard Cruiser has dropped a bit in points. It's now 115 points. The weapon itself also got a bit of a, a tap on the fingers. They have uh, fewer support dice these days. But overall, this is a very capable Bombard Cruiser. You do have to take into account that it's only got armor five, so it is a bit frail for a cruiser compared to other factions, but yeah, it's a very solid option. You can give them the phosphorus shells, however, that bumps them up to 130 points. Um, I'm not sure I want to. There is some merit to this, like if you have some points to spare, you can you can select this. The Volt Gun batteries will load your opponent's ship up with Disorder tokens very, very quickly, and then these uh, these hazardous weapons can uh, can really go to town on something that's already been damaged. But yeah, it's uh, it's it, I would only do it if I had the points to spare, really. And these have the spotter rule. So if you're taking these Augustus Bombard cruisers. Always take a carrier with you, like a Conrad, uh, to accompany them. But luckily, the Conrad is now something that is quite valuable, and I'll explain why later. The Blucher Cruiser got a phenomenal hit compared to the previous edition. Maybe rightfully so, because in the previous version it was so good that all of the other cruisers, in my eyes, were just invalidated because this one was so good. The other one was the Ryder Flak cruiser, that was one that was able to sort of hold its ground against this one, and I had to nerf that one as well. So I'm not salty about this, uh, it's it's a better, or it's a change for the better of the game. Um, why? Mostly because the heavy fault gun battery got uh, so hit with their support dice. At optimum range, it's an 8-3 weapon, meaning full units of uh, Blüchers are a lot less deadly than they used to be. Um, at ideal closing range, previously I think they had 14 dice in an attack, that has now been reduced to 11. However, the Prussians are not the only faction that have to deal with overall lower uh, attack dice in this new edition, um, so you know. It's not that bad. It's still good. You can also now use them as escorts for uh, Prussian ships, but I vastly prefer the Conrad for this. Mostly because the Blücher cruiser is... Well, if you attach it to a flagship, that flagship has to use one weapon as the lead weapon in order to trigger its supercharged munitions. And then you would have to use two heavy Volt Gun batteries in support from your Blücher Cruiser. And that is the, the weakest thing it can do. So I'm not a big fan of this one as an escorter. 
even though Escort is quite good because you get an increase to ADV and SDV and Elector class and Kaiser class already have significant and high uh, ADV especially. So, um, but I would use the Conrad as an Escort, more on which later. Then we have the Ferdinand the Advanced Cruiser. It's a Teutonic one, so if you want to flesh out your Teutonic fleet, this is uh, your, uh, your sort of standard cruiser for that one. And it can also escort ships in Teutonic fleets. So that's a good one. What is the main thing it gains for the, what is it? I think it was six points compared to, yeah, it's six points extra compared to the Blücher. And for that, you get a flak feeling. That's a super solid and reasonable change, especially because you also get that elite crew bonus um, while making or defending from an assault, you can re-roll your blanks, which is good because Volt batteries help you in an assault, and that's something that the Prussians overall do reasonably well. So, not quite as good as their Scandinavian counterparts, but I'm not yet discussing those as they have not been released. The Hochmeister is definitely an interesting one. Um, it just pops out of nowhere because of that uh, Zeitwahl rule that it has. Um, it just is always kept in reserve and just pops up somewhere and uses that uh, giant Blitzschlacht 200, we got a lot of those names, to just slice through the enemy and making a big assault. They nerfed the fray a bit the amount of support dice it gets has been uh, has been hit slightly, but it's still a formidable unit. And you can take a Hochmeister to actually escute, uh, escort now your uh, Metzger units. So, you know, they come per three in a box. It's absolutely valid to build two Metzgers and then just have a third one as the Hochmeister to go along with it. However, you do use uh, or lose the option if you do so to just take the Hochmeister fleet, because if I'm not mistaken, you need to take three of those to go so. And they can take generators. That is important, why? They do have an impressive armor value. They have an okay-ish citadel value, but when you look at the amount of hull points these things have, that's not very impressive, is it? So they, uh, they hit hard, they'll hit first, but if your opponent can then get the jump on them, it'll hurt. It'll hurt, for sure. However, with Giant Slayer, they can actually uh, you know, go for the enemy's flagships as well quite decently. I like these. I would just be playing with these because of the models, if I'm brutally honest. They look amazing, and I'll be getting two boxes as soon as this, uh, this hits. This is a new addition, the Hoth Heavy Corvette, but like I said, I'm refraining myself from discussing any of the Scandinavian units. The video will be long enough even without me discussing these. So, onwards. The Conrad, next. This is the one I was talking about earlier. It's got the escort duty, and I really, really like it in this role. Why? Well, you still get the plus two ADV and SDV, but mostly because it comes ex equipped with a Speerschluder, the torpedoes. If you're using your uh, Elector battle fleet, you upgrade your flagship from normal spear shooters to the, the, the long range ones, the heavy ones, sorry. And this one is uh, a weapon that does lend a good amount of support dice to the lead weapon. And they're Voltaic as well, meaning if you add more dice to it, which it does quite well, the chances of kicking in that inductorium and having a more solid uh, torpedo attack is a solid one. I mean, even at extreme range, you are hit. You're throwing four dice into the equation with your Speerschluder, if you're using a heavy one, and your flagship is quite likely, if you're playing a combo with the Conrad at least, to have that spotter rule for its torpedoes, giving them sustain on it. And for that reason alone, I prefer the Conrad as the supporter for uh, for my flagship. Tested it out instantly, fell in love with it. You get the SRS tokens, that's great. You can start cycling through your cards if you're not using it for the spotter rule afterwards, which is also great. 
can go and send out to clear mines. I mean, it's an incredibly versatile ship, and I absolutely love it as an escort vehicle for the rest. I've not really looked into this rule all that much. Um, it's 20 extra points. You get four tokens that are slightly better. Uh, as in, I think you can re-roll blank results on all attack run dice even provided by other friendly SRS tokens. So if you want to play with big stacks of SRS tokens, this one might just be the one you could get. Especially kids, you can take this on your um, supporting ship, giving you, um, well, no, sorry, you can't. You need to take a maximum sized Conrad support carrier unit for this to take effect. So yeah. If you've already invested 360 points into one of those, I suppose 20 points isn't too bad, but well, this wasn't one that really piqued my interest, interest just yet. Might be good though, if you think it is, sound off in the comments. The next one is the Metzger Vitruvian Colossus, the other build option for that one. And even though it's normally a Teutonic ship, you can use this variant in any Prussian battle fleet. Why a single Metzger unit may be included in battle fleets with the Prussian flagships. Um, now, <laughs> I am not 100% sure, I'm going to ask for a bit of clarification there. If you take a Metzger unit of two and use a throw a Hochmeister in there, is that selected as a separate unit? Um, is that a Teutonic unit as well? Does that one become Prussian? Is that an option? Because, yeah, that's still a bit unclear and I'm hoping clarifications can come. If it does, I'll put it in the comment section below and make sure that uh, that you understand what it's about. Now, any model may replace its Übervolt Fehrling, which is the big old four cannon arm that it has with a Sturmbringer for free. Well, brilliant. I didn't even know that kit was that versatile that you could actually swap in a Sturmbringer for it, but there you go, it must be if it's in one of these options here. Is I don't think they want you to slice up those uh, those models. Otherwise, it just comes with that same sidewall, it just shows up and it has the claw arc projector making it extremely efficient while ramming. And if I'm not mistaken, these things can ram even if they didn't move more than three inches in the movement phase. They've got five unmodified hull. That'll make a bit of a weak ram. However, 11 inches, uh, or sorry, ramming 11 with devastating. That's going to make it good. Um, but don't expect to get much of a speed bonus because with a mass three, meaning you can drift three inches and speed three, getting a good running start of, uh, of plus six is, is going to be uh, yeah, difficult. But not impossible. So, no, there's that thing. Odin Reavers. Again, I can really discuss those, but they looked okay to me. The Writer Flak Cruiser, still the same points. Flak Fearling took a big old hit by losing its sustained to anything but air and skimming units, and yet I still think it's a solid option. It's just one that you don't want to spam as you did before, but. I can always see myself taking one or two of them, uh, just in case my opponent starts bringing air units. We've been playing against the Empire with their Tianlongs, and having seen what those things can do, I don't think I'm going to leave home without a writer uh, anytime soon because of that. The Schaumburg Escort Cruiser uh, was made a bit cheaper than it was before, it's now only uh, 85 points if I'm not mistaken and uh, yeah, you can't take them in units anymore. It was a useless option to begin with uh, so it's not a bad thing that it's been removed. They lost the ability to cycle extra cards for that supply ship thing that it had. Um, however, they if you can't afford a Conrad as an escort duty, I very much advise you to get this one. Same reasons. It's got that Speerschluder, which is great. 
and it comes with a mine layer and a mine sweeper at the same time which is always handy to have um, now they did change uh, it slightly you can't just drop it in front of a model from the get-go but yeah if you want to squeeze your enemy into one pathway mines are always a good thing next up is the Sigimir destroyer um, got pack hunter which is good you get some extra dice uh, but sadly they need it fault guns aren't exactly that impressive anymore so you're not getting an amazing amount of attacks out of them um, they also come in units of two these days uh, where you can take four additional ones but like I discussed with the Arminius you're just handing out victory points if you're taking them per two in my book so I wouldn't wouldn't advise it you want three to begin with because of back hunter anyway so yeah three of them and if you do they come in just uh, over a hundred points again if you've got the points to spare you can fit one in surely but sadly because of the game mechanics you might be shooting yourself in the foot the Totten Heavy Destroyer though that one has changed uh, the points cost has haven't dropped don't get too excited it's because they also became units of two with you being able to get four additional models they can be included in Teutonic Battle Fleet and get those rules if you want but the interesting part is they now have advanced storm coils that gives sustained quality on their um, their storm Clower. and storm Clower at closing range they're not joke I mean they're not much worse than uh, than the vault guns but with the, the sustained and the devastating that you get with them and being arc we weapons they get the benefit from inductorium as well this isn't a bad unit I mean this one can put in a lot of work however for a mass one ship you always have the fragility of just a single citadel breach will blow them up and you know citadel 10 at least provides you a better defense against that way more so than the Sigimer destroyer just because of that reason if you have the points to spare I would opt for the Toten all day every day if you want something you know with a similar role it's just playing better at it the Valkyrie looks very promising I mean Sturmklauen and Flak Fearling looks promising but like I said I'm not divulging too much into that one and then we have the Folsom Strike Cruiser hasn't changed all that much um, it's more of an interesting choice mostly because the heavy fault gun battery was uh, was nerfed so hard they still have the focused gunnery thing and they be can be included in Teutonic battle fleets um, it's a typical ship of if you're able to get very close up to your enemy that Sturmbringer is devastating uh, absolutely devastating but you have to get quite close and personal. Mind you, getting close and personal is something the Germans do really, really well. So that concludes the whole uh, the whole video. It was a massive video, but then again, it is the biggest faction by far. So if you stuck with it to the end, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you picked up a few handy tricks along the way, or if you've spotted any mistakes, feel free to tell me. So can actually edit a few things if need be. Alright, I will see you in the next video. Bye!